بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما بعد إن شاء الله in today's uh, reminder I want to just share some reflections on verse number seven from Surah Ibrahim that was recited yesterday uh, Allah سبحانه وتعالى he says وإن تأذن ربك وإذ تأذن ربكم لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He recalls what Musa alayhi salam um, said to his people. And the ayah preceding it, in the ayah preceding it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He narrates to us how Musa alayhi salam told Bani Israel to remember the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon them. And of course, Bani Israel, as we all know, went through great difficulties uh, with Musa السلام, at the hands of Fir'aun. There was a lot of punishment, there was a lot of persecution. Um, the children were being killed. So they went through a lot of difficulty. And then, Musa السلام, he says, and remember when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when your Lord proclaimed that if you are grateful, I will increase you. I will give you more. وَلَإِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ But if you are ungrateful or you deny the blessings of Allah, then my punishment is severe. And this, of course, this concept of shukr is something that we find in many places in the Qur'an. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to be grateful to Him. فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ وَاشْكُرُوا لِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ Remember me, make mention of me, I will make mention of you. Be grateful to me and be not ungrateful. So the concept of shukr, and what is shukr? When we think about shukr, shukr is to show your appreciation to the one that does anything good for you. Yes, somebody who does a favor upon you, you show them gratitude. You show them thanks, you show them appreciation. And there is no one who's done more good to us than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one who is most deserving of our gratitude. He is the one who is most deserving of our shukr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who's created you and I. Yes, الذي خلقك فسواك فعدلك. That He's the one who created you. He created me. We breathe the air of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He provides for us on a daily basis. And there are many ayat and hadith, as I said, that talk about this concept and the the, the topic of shukr. But before going into shukr itself, just to reflect on the blessings of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Sometimes I think we we don't truly appreciate the blessings of Allah. You know everything that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has blessed us with. When you just reflect on what we enjoy from the moment that you wake up in the morning. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for you shelter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for you food, drink. You had suhoor this morning. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for you the clothes that you wear, the car that you drove in to get to the masjid, the job that you enjoy, the family that you have, the safety, the security. All of these things that we take for granted, subhanAllah, are great blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, the water that you drink, you turn the tap and water comes out. This is a ni'mah from Allah. How many of our brothers and sisters are there in different parts of the world who, who don't have this tap that just, you know, well, clean water comes rushing out? This is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fact that you're healthy, you're free from any major illness. Ask somebody who's in hospital how much of a blessing health is. Ask somebody who's being tested with an illness how much of a blessing health is. These are blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we should appreciate, we should recognize. And that's the first step when the ulama talk about gratitude. They say the first step to gratitude is ma'rifatun ni'mah, is that you recognize the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can you be grateful if you don't even appreciate or acknowledge that the thing that you're enjoying is actually a blessing from Allah? This is the first step, my dear brothers and sisters, when it comes to gratitude. And as was just recited, if you were to try to recount or list the blessings of Allah, you will not be able to do so. As I said, you could go on and on, every single thing. The fact that I can raise my hand right now is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fact that we are gathered in this masjid tonight, and alhamdulillah, we have, we're not worried about what's going on outside and whether there are bombs going to drop on us or anything like that. This is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should say alhamdulillah for these things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ Every single blessing that you enjoy is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It all goes back to Allah. Never forget that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the mun'im. He is the one who gives the blessings. He is the bestower of blessings. The fact that, mashallah, you have a family is a blessing from Allah. You have a spouse, you have children, blessing from Allah. 
These are things we say Alhamdulillah for. These are things we don't take for granted. So as I said, the first um, step to gratitude is to recognize the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One day Umar radiallahu anhu, he was walking in the streets of Medina and he heard a person making the dua, Allahumma ja'alni min al-aqallin, that make me from those who are few in number. So Umar questioned him, that what is this few in number that you're talking about? Why are you making this dua? I've not heard this dua before. Make me from those who are few in number. And then the man he recited to Umar the ayah, وَقْلِيلٌ مِنْ عِبَادِي الشَّفُورِ That very few of my servants, of my slaves are grateful, are grateful to me. Very few. So this man is asking, Allah, that make me from those who are grateful to you. And is this not true today? If we are to reflect on ourselves, how many of us are truly grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So how do we show gratitude? This is a question. Ibn Rajab, rahimahullah, one of the great scholars of the past, he said that there are three stages to to um, showing complete shukr. He said first and foremost is you have to do shukr bil qalb, that you are grateful in the heart. And what does that mean? It comes back to this point of recognizing the blessing. Yes, inwardly recognizing that the thing that you enjoy is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, he said number two is wal lisan, that you outwardly thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that blessing. Yes, and as I said, all of the ones that I just mentioned, and the list goes on and on, to actually say Alhamdulillah for this blessing, to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that blessing, yes, to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that blessing, tahaddus bin ni'mah, that you make mention of the blessing, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions, وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثِ As for the blessings of your Lord, make mention of them. Yes, say, yani outwardly actually thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those blessings. And then he said the third aspect of shukr is a shukr bil jawarih, is that you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your limbs, i.e. with actions. I'malu ala Dawood a shukra. The O family of Dawood show gratitude through your actions. Do actions which show you're grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and utilize the blessing in a way which is pleasing to Allah. As we said once before, the height of ingratitude is you use Allah's blessings to disobey Him. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you wealth, you use that wealth to disobey Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you the ability to speak. Allah has given you the ability to, to use these, these limbs that He's blessed us with. But you use those limbs to disobey Allah. This is something we'll have to answer for on the Day of Judgment. So the third as aspect, as I said, is to utilize the blessing in a way which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you think about the different Anbiya, and you look at the stories of these Anbiya, Nuh alayhi salam. Nuh alayhi salam gave da'wah for 950 years. Nuh alayhi salam went through great struggles with his people. They rejected him, they ridiculed him, they mocked him. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes Nuh alayhi salam as what? Innahu kana abdun shakura. That Nuh alayhi salam was what? A grateful servant. When you think about that, you would, you would assume Allah would call Nuh alayhi salam what? A patient servant, the fact that he went on and on and on and never gave up and kept giving da'wah and kept giving da'wah, he showed patience. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described him as what? As a grateful servant. And Mujahid, one of the great scholars of tafsir, he said in his commentary to the verse, he said that Nuh alayhi salam would not eat anything without thanking Allah. Yes, he would not drink anything without thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described him as a grateful servant. Described him as a grateful servant. Yes, other and many other Mufassirin mentioned similar points. When Nuh salam would eat, he would say Alhamdulillah. When he would drink, he would say Alhamdulillah. When he would put on his clothes, he would say Alhamdulillah. When he would ride his animal, he would say Alhamdulillah. Showing, recognizing that all of these things are from Allah. We say Alhamdulillah. All praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for them. And like this, other Anbiya, uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was described as what? Shakiran di anumi. That he was grateful for the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Ibn al Qayyim, he mentioned something beautiful. He said that when Allah describes Ibrahim alayhi salam, he described him as an ummah. Yes, he described him and he has, as being a leader. Qanit lillah. He was somebody who was obedient to Allah. He was Hanif. He was somebody who turned away from worshipping others besides Allah or worshipping uh, uh, idols. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the end, he says he was grateful for his favors. Showing what? That of all of these traits, Ibn al-Qayyim says that his gratefulness was the most honorable of those traits. Subhanallah. The, he, the most honorable of those traits that were mentioned was that he was grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then of course we have the Prophet wasallam, the one who would stand in the night prayer for hours upon hours upon hours and Aisha would say, Allah, why are you going, putting yourself through this, this difficulty, this hardship? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven everything. Any mishaps, all everything's overlooked. 
Yeah, so what does he say? He says, should I not be a grateful servant? Should I not be a grateful servant? He would stand in the night prayer to show his gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my dear brothers and sisters, this concept of shukr is something that we must revive. We must actually actively be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as I said, it starts with recognizing the blessing, Yes, making mention of it and then using the blessings in a way which is pleasing to Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He makes us all from the grateful ones.